Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkroom Ghouls, and today we're going to be doing a Libromancer deck profile. So I'm really excited to see you guys because this deck is a really amazing deck that I've been playing around with a lot recently. It's a really fun ritual-based deck that has all sorts of amazing combos in it, and I'm really excited to show you guys all the tech cards I'm playing in this particular build. So, without further ado guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards. Like in your name, scripture, every single video, getting a signed card to the mail, and even getting to request a deck profile every single month. You're a patron, along with test hands. So, without further ado, let's get straight on into this. So, first off, we're gonna be playing three copies of Libromancer Geek Boy. This card is a really amazing effect that you can reveal a ritual monster in your hand to special summon this card from your hand. And if this card is special summoned, then you can add a Libromancer spell from your deck to your hand, which is a great effect because it gets us to one of the most powerful cards in the entire deck. We then play three copies of Libromancer Agent. I did consider playing this card as a two of in this build, but I ended up with three and it's really worked out. It has the ability that you can reveal a ritual monster in your hand, this special summon this card from your hand, and then you can target a Libromancer card in your graveyard, accept another copy of itself and add it to your hand. Then if it was a spell or trap, you have to place a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck, which this card is a really good card because it's basically a free special summon and it's super easy to put on the field to get a card back from the graveyard we then play a single copy of libromancer magic girl i play a single copy of her but i did consider playing her as a two of and then two copies of agent so you guys can try that out if you want to it did work out but i liked the three and one instead but this card has the ability to reveal a ritual monster in your hand special summon this card from your hand and then during your opponent's turn quick effect you can ritual summon a Libromancer ritual monster from your hand by tributing monsters from your hand or field whose total levels equal or exceed its level which is a great effect to basically have a walking ritual spell. We then play three copies of Libromancer Doom Broker. This card is a great boss monster for the deck that has the ability that you can ritual summon this card with the Libromancer card. And if this card is ritual summoned by using a monsters on the field, it can attack directly with a 2,500 attack point monster. You can only use each of the following effects this card once per turn. And during the main phase, you can set a Libromancer trap directly from the deck and when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent you can target a face-up monster opponent controls and shuffle it into the deck that is a really really insanely powerful effect we then play two copies of Libromancer Firestarter. This card is a good two of in here, but you really only need two copies of Firestarter. It has the ability that you can ritual summon this card with a Libromancer card. And if this card is ritual summoned using a monsters on the field, it has the ability that it cannot be destroyed or banished by card effects. And it gains 200 attack and defense each time your opponent activates a card or effect while you control this card with attack less than 3000 in the monster zone, which is a pretty good effect to be able to just get this monster all the way up to 3,000 attack points. We then play two copies of Punk Z-Man. Z-Man is a really good two of in this deck because it has the ability you pay 600 life points and then you get to add from your deck to your hand another Punk Monster, which is always nice in this deck to be able to go in for your Aurorodon plays and Needle Fiber plays. We then play a single copy of Madam Spider because it searches a really powerful trap card by just paying 600 life points and helps out a lot to be able to get this monster on your side of the field to go into those needle fiber plays. We then play a single copy of Foxy Tune because Foxy Tune is going to be the one you're going to be searching off your copy of your Z-Man all the time, which is a great effect to be able to just send this card and another card from your hand to the graveyard to get the exact card that you need onto your side of the field, like your copy of Madam Spider. We we then play three copies of Diviner of the Herald, which I'm playing three copies in this deck, but I am proxying these. I do have a way to make these on my channel to show you guys, but only use them for playtesting. This card has the ability, if this card is normal or special summon, you can send a fairy monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard, which is always going to be from the extra deck. And if you do this turn, the, this monster gains level equal to the monster's level, boosting it all the way up to a level six monster when you send your copy of of Herald of Arclight 
from your extra deck to the graveyard, which will also give you a search of a ritual monster or a ritual spell, which is always nice in this deck. We then play a single copy of Colt Wing. Colt Wing is really good because it combos very well with your copy of Aurorodon to give you two more tokens on your side of the field. And if you have Despot 01 in the graveyard, it will actually bring the Despot 01 back to your side of the field, which we are playing a single copy of Despot 01 to special summon off of our copy of our Needle Fiber. So that's it for the monsters, guys let's get into the hand traps so for the hand traps we are going to be playing just a few in this deck we're going to be playing three copies of ash blossom basically just to stop the opponent from touching the deck it's always nice to be able to play this card in the deck because it's just going to be able to shut down a lot of plays when your opponent's trying to search and then two copies of ghost ogre and snow rabbit this could be any other hand trap that you wanted to be it could be ghost mourner it could be any of the other ones that you wanted to play ghost bell any of those hand traps effect veilers i'm currently playing the copies of ghost ogre because it is an e tele deck and so it's really easy to summon out ghost ogre in this build i have considered dropping them though for copies of ghost bell because it does handle a lot of stuff but being able to pop a card with ghost ogre is always nice so that's it for the hand traps guys let's get into the spells so for the spells, we're going to be playing a single copy of Called by the Grave. Called by the Grave is a really good card in this deck because you don't want to get hand trapped and it's always nice to be able to activate this card to be able to stop your opponent from hand trapping you. One copy of Harpy's Feather Duster just to be able to handle back row. It's always a great card to be able to top deck or open with this card to be able to get rid of all sorts of different back row that your opponent might lay against you. Three copies of Etelly. Etelly is a really, really good three of in this deck because basically this lets you special match your copies of your punk monsters or your copies of Geek Boy because it is actually a psychic monster, which is really nice in this deck because it's going to get you into your plays because it just says when this card is special summon, not when it's special summon by its own effect. This card is a really, really good 3F, and you always want to see this card in your opening hand. We then play three copies of Libromancer First Appearance. This card is an insanely powerful field spell that also is a ritual spell that has the ability that when this card is activated you can add a libromancer monster from your deck to your hand with a different name than the cards that you control and then during your main phase you can ritual summon one libromancer ritual monster from your hand by tributing monsters from your hand or field whose total levels equal or exceed the level of that monster but you can only activate one libromancer first appearance per turn really amazing card because basically it's going to be able to let you ritual summon and also get you a search so that's it for the spell cards guys let's get into the traps so for the traps, we're going to be playing a single copy of Dangerous Kaboo. Dangerous Kaboo is here because you can search it off your copies of Madam Spider to be able to activate the ability that you can target one effect monster upon it controls and negate its effects until the end of this turn. It also has the ability to be control a punk monster, then you gain light points equal to target monster's original attack, which can be quite a lot of light points that you can gain off this card. We then play three co or two copies of the Libromancer Trap card. This card is a really good two of in this deck that has the ability that when you your opponent activates a card or effect target one libromancer ritual monster that you control and return to the hand and if you negate the activation of that effect and then you can special summon one libromancer from your hand or graveyard which is a pretty good effect to be able to get that extra monster on your side of the field also having a searchable negate we then play three copies of solemn strike solemn strike is here because it basically just stops everything which is really really nice it has the ability that when a monsters would be special summoned or a monster effect is activated you pay 1500 life points to negate the summon or activation if you do destroy that card it is a speed spell three so this card is a really really good three of in this deck so that's it for the main deck guys let's get into the extra deck so for the extra deck, we're going to be playing two copies of Herald of the Arclight. This card is in here because you're going to be able to summon this card with your Aurorodon plays or send it to the graveyard with Diviner of the Heralds. But basically, you're just trying to get this card into the graveyard because if it's sent to the graveyard, you get to add a ritual monster or a ritual spell from your deck to your hand. But since we don't play any ritual spells outside of our field spell, we're just going to be able to search those ritual monsters. We then play a single copy of Cupid Pitch because this card is really good to help us go in for Aurorodon plays to go into some really 
really powerful boss monsters. It also has the ability that if this card is on the field and you synchro summon this card, you can increase this card's level by the tuner monsters level that you use to synchro summon this card. Since we're always going to be using Despot 01, this card is going to go up to a level 5, which is really nice to be able to go in for some level 8 synchro plays with one of the Auroradon tokens, which is always nice for this card. We then play a single copy of FA Dawn Dragster because it is a spell and trap negate. Really good card in this deck and really easy to summon. One copy of Borload Savage Dragon. This card is really good to be able to summon with your copy of Cupid Pitch and super easy to summon with one of your copies or one of your tokens that the Aurorodon is going to generate, which is always nice. One copy of the Punk Amazing Dragon. Really easy to summon in this deck. Really amazing card and super easy to just balance two cards on your opponent's side of the field back to their hand or be a walking monster reborn for one of your punk monsters. Really easy to summon with the Aurorodon combo. One copy of Ultimaya to Zulk, and you might be looking at this card and thinking, how am I going to summon that? Well, Diviner of the Herald will actually go to a level 6 when it sends your copy of Herald of the Arclight to the graveyard, and since we play cards like our Libromancer Agent, it's very easy to actually go in for Tzolkin to get you a really powerful dragon on your side of the field, and since we're playing so much back row in this deck, around 6 cards, one of which being or three of which actually being searchable back row. It's super easy to be able to summon out your copy of Crystal Wing off your Ultimaya to Zulkin to be able to give you an extremely powerful monster negate. We then play a single copy of Abyss Dweller just to be able to shut down the graveyard. And again, easy to summon with your copy of Herald of Arclight and your Cult Wing is just an amazing card. One copy of Needle Fiber because it's a really good combo piece in this deck. One copy of Aurorodon for all those tokens that we can put on our side of the field. Cross Sheet because we do play a ritual based deck so let's just draw two and then discard two nightmare phoenix to pop spells and traps unicorn to spin stuff and then access code talker so we can pop a bunch of cards on the field and it's just a really good boss monster so that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. It's a really fun deck to be able to play with. If you guys have never played Libromancer before, you definitely should. I'm really excited to see what kind of support this deck actually gets out of the next pack because it is right now a TCG exclusive deck. And so I'm really excited to see what we get for the next wave of support. So anyways, guys, this is Darkroom Duelist. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell there so you can come part of the notification squad. And we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.